In this part of the free Blender in Blender course, you'll learn how to edit a product animation. And this is only part one of the editing. There's also going to be a part two where we're going to do some more advanced tricks. So let's get started straight away. So right now, all we have to do is bring in our shots into this timeline right over here. And I'm going to treat this as if you have never touched DaVinci Resolve before so you can follow along just fine. I've got my PNG renders right over here in all separate folders and I'm just going to add them to the timeline simply dragging it in like this. And that's the way we're gonna do it. So I recommend you do that and I will see you in a bit. All right, so right now I've added all the renders that we've made together in this free course and they are stacked like this. So first I did the intro shot, then we are doing the fruit explosion, then we are doing the normal animation right over here, which is just some colored blenders moving aside. Then we've got the abuse AI video one where the background changes from different kitchens. Then we have the strawberry growing animation right over here and we have the strawberry slice and eventually the final smoothie animation right over here. There's a couple of things we need to do. First of all, this is not going to play well. So if you want to increase the playback speed of your video, you can go right over here to playback, timeline proxy resolution and set it to quarter. And this will make sure that the render quality that we made it in, which is 1080p, will actually be four times less. So it's going to be easier to play this out. I still find it to be quite slow. And the reason for it is that PNGs by itself have a very large file size and it has to move frame by frame and it will be quite slow. So another method to do it would be to go to playback render cache and set it to smart. And this will practically make sure that it's being loaded into the cache. I'm not sure why we're not seeing it right now, but we are seeing it right here where the red line is. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to render this out as an MP4. So you can follow this tutorial easily. I can just play it back and it will go smoothly. Otherwise I would constantly have to wait and it's not a very pleasant experience for you as a viewer as well. So I'm going to press I, which is going to be our in point, And it's going to render starting from here. And I'm going all the way over here. Then move one frame backwards and press O. And now we will have this entire timeline ready to be rendered in MP4. But before I actually do that, I would like to color grade this original image. It's not going to make that much of a difference, but I do feel like it is better to do it that way. So we are going to do the color grading first, and then we are going to make some transitions, make sure everything flows over into each other real nice. So we've got the intro shot. I'm going to place my play hat right above here on a nice looking frame, and I'm going to the color panel right over here, which is shaped like a painter's palette. So I'm going to click on it, and now we get a couple of notes and things that we can work with. I'm not going to make this too advanced. I have other videos on DaVinci Resolve where I go more in depth about certain things that I do in the color grading tab. But for now, I'm just going to use these notes to get a better look out of this image that we've got right here. Because it's a little bit washed out and I want it to be a bit more saturated, maybe a bit more contrasty. So I'm going to press Alt S and this will allow us to make a new note. And then I will press Alt S two more times. So we have four notes right now. And it's kind of in my habit to leave the first one untouched because that is usually where I place my noise reduction. If you work with actual footage, you usually get some noise and you want to remove that, etc. But in this case, the cycle's noise really isn't the same as the film grain noise that you get from filming with an actual camera. So we're just going to leave this untouched. I'm going into the second note right over here. And I will go to this tab, which is the third one. And we can play around with the gain, the gamma and the contrast, etc. So we have several different options right over here. And what I'm using the first note for always is the exposure. So we're going to do the exposure, then we're going to do the contrast and then we're going to do the balancing of this. And afterwards I will add some saturation and some other stuff to make it look a little bit better. So right over here in this note, we can work on the exposure. Now there's a couple of different methods to do this. I've went over this before. You can increase the offset slider right over here, but actually I don't think this is the best way to add exposure. So I'm going right over here to the HDR tab, which is the fourth one. And I will play around with the global exposure. It's EXP right over here. And you can play this upwards, bring it downwards to make it darker or lighter. And I think it just looks a little bit better than the other method. So I'm going to do it like this. And we have a little bit of brightness being returned. Then I'm going into the second note and I will go over to this tab right now and I will play around with the contrast. So I'm going to increase this just a little bit and I will increase the pivot in this case. So this is what it does for us. It brings back some of those shadows and it removes some of the highlights that we've got over the entire screen. So you can press Control D when you are on a note to turn it off and you can press Shift D to turn off all notes. So Shift D and this is what we've done thus far. It already looks a whole lot better, but right now we can go into this note and this is for balancing. So basically when you have something white in your shot and it turns orange because the temperature of your camera is on a different setting and then it's a little bit weird looking, you can turn it back to white. In this specific case, I don't think we are going to need it because we have clouds and they are entirely white. But right over here, there's a picker tool. And if you select this and select something white in your scene right over here, it should change the color. Now in this case, it doesn't change the color because our whites are white. But let me show you what I mean. So let's add a note right before this, Shift S, and I will turn up the, let's say, orange gain. 
So now this is definitely not white anymore, it's a bit orange. So if I select this and I tell the program, this is actually white, please change the temperature. So I'm going to select this and now it's going to turn the clouds white, which are actually white, and it changed the temperature in order to not make it seem orange. So that's basically what's going on here. But I'm going to delete both of these nodes because we don't need them. So I'm going to press Alt S and I'm going to leave this node untouched simply to follow my own structure. So I have clarity over what is happening. I'm not going to change the name of all of these nodes. So I'm going to press Alt S and I will place one right over here. I like to work in force and then move my way down. I think it can be a little bit darker in the shadows. So what I'm going to do is I'm heading over to gamma and I'm going to turn this down because I like doing it with the gamma. If you do it with lift, it tends to become a bit more aggressive. So I like to do it with gamma first, see what we can achieve. And I think this already looks a little bit better. So I'm going to roll with this one. Then I'm going to press Alt S and now we want to add some saturation. I think it's pretty saturated already, but we can do something with this. So there are like four methods to bring in saturation into your shot. You have a slider right over here, which is called saturation. And you can increase that. But the way I like to do it is by going over here to this tab, increase the red, increase the green, increase the blue output, and then it will be fully saturated, which is way too much. So we have to go over here, which is called the output node. And we can go to the key output and change the power of this node, so to speak. So if this is zero, the node actually will not do anything. But if we increase this ever so slightly, it will bring back some of that color. And as you can see, it is starting to become a bit more vibrant. And I think this shot looks pretty cool. Now, there's some other things that we can do. So let's press Alt S and you might want to sharpen this. So if you go over here, type sharpen, drag it on here. You can see, if you zoom in, you can see that it's bringing back some detail. Now, I think it's always way too extreme because it starts at 1.8. I'm just going to set it to like 1.2 or 1.3, something like that. It should be barely noticeable, but it gives it this extra sense of sharpness and I like that. So I'm going to press Alt S once again. And for this next note, I am going to add a film grain. Film grain, because we want to make it look like it was filmed with an actual camera. It's going to be very subtle, but I like to add it anyway. So zoom in very deep right over here and you are not able to see anything but if we increase the grain strength which is located right over here you will be able to see that something happens this is way too extreme and it looks pretty ugly you can see it in the water it's basically as if we didn't shot this right so we have to decrease the strength of this but i'm also going to change some settings in the film grain presets so on the top here we have a drop down menu i'm going in there and i will select 16 millimeter 500t which is right over here to increase the grain strength until we see exactly what it does. Then I'm going to bring it down ever so slightly and make sure that we just have a little bit of that camera quality. Now for the final note, what you could add, I'm not sure if this is going to work out for this render specifically, but I'm going to press Alt S and I will bring in a vignette note. So right over here, vignette. Then we can play around with the settings. It basically means that we have these darkened edges right over here. So I'm going to increase the size. I'm going to increase the anamorphism, which means that it will be stretched out a little bit like this like so. Then I will increase the softness. And finally, I will go into the global blend and bring this down. So something like this is to my liking. Maybe a little bit less. Yeah, just a little bit. Let's go over here, let's remove this. Control F to go into full screen. And I will press Shift D. So this was what we got straight out of the render engine. And now if I press Shift D, we get a whole lot more color and a whole lot more depth in this shot. But that's the way I like to do it and this render thereby is done. But there's a problem. So we added the vignette last but actually the film grain happens in the entire shot. So that means that the film grain should always be the last one. So I'm going to disconnect this like so. We'll bring this over here and take this, connect it like so and make sure that the film grain is the last note. Before the vignette we can add something else. So in this case, I'm just going to add five, I'm going to make it a little bit messy, doesn't matter. I'm going to press Alt S on this third note, so we get a new note that's going to be placed right in between. And then I will add a glow from the effects menu right over there. I'm going to drag it on here, and as you can see, it kind of blows out the entire image. So we have to play around with some settings. I'm going down first to the gain, and I will decrease the gain just a little bit. We, we don't want those blown out whites right over there. And then I will increase the spread just a little bit, see what it does for us does kind of give this extra vibe to it. The shine threshold decides where the glow will be applied to which light values. So obviously right now when it's very high, only the brightest light source will give some glow. But if we bring it down, even less brighter light sources will be able to have glow. But I'm not going to do that. I think something like this is pretty fine. And then I will go to global blend all the way at the bottom and move it downwards in order to decrease the glow strength. So something like this 
just gives it that little extra vibe that I think we needed. So now I'm going over to the second clip and I'm going to find a part where we can actually see what's going on. So this is the render and I want to color grade this as well, but I don't want to do the work again. So what I'm going to do is I will click on clips right over here, which will enable this middle bar where all the clips are located, just in case you aren't seeing that. And then I will select the original clip, so like this one, which is not graded yet. And then I will go over to this clip, hold my mouse over it and press middle mouse button. And this will copy the color grade that we just made for this clip onto the new clip right here. Now, we only have to change the notes that we are not happy with. But the first thing I'm noticing is that this color is pretty dark and I want it to be a little bit brighter. And the first thing I'm noticing is that it's probably going to be the camera that we brought down. So that's this note and let's turn it off. So it's bringing back some of the light values and I don't think we actually need this note. So I'm going to leave it turned off. Now I do think we could use a little bit more brightness. So I'm going over into the second note, which is the HDR. You can actually see the sign right over here. Go over to the HDR in this tab and go to the exposure and increase it just a little bit to make it a bit more bright. This is before and this is after. You can always play around with any of these settings if you like. Now all we have to do is copy the same settings to this one, but as you can see it's way too bright. So now we need to go back into the HDR, decrease the exposure until it looks a bit more correct. And maybe the more contrasty one is a bit better, so I'm going to turn this note back on. So before and after and now we've got that done. Let's do the same for this one. Let's go over here, let's copy all the settings. Let's go to a certain part in this render. I'm just going to do the first part right over there. And I think it could be a little bit brighter. So I'm going to increase the exposure. We'll go over here, see if the contrast is working out for us. Maybe we can play around with it, increase it. Nah, it's too much. Just going to do something like this. Let's have a look at our gamma that we removed. Ah, that's fine, so decrease the power of the glow. So it will be really subtle. I can see something happening right over here, but it's not going to be extreme. So let's go over to the next one, right over here. And this also looks pretty good to me. I think this is a pretty great looking render. So now for this one, maybe the saturation is a bit too strong. Saturation is a bit too strong. I don't like the blue to be that blue. So there's two ways to change this. We actually have our saturation right here. And if I turn this off, it looks like this. And we can decrease it just a little bit right over here. Maybe the blue is a bit too blue. So I'm going to teach you a new trick. So I am going to add a note right in between those. So I'm going to move this. Sometimes I press G when I'm on these notes just because I'm used to Blender, but Alt S. And right here we have a new note. We can go over here to the curves. And here we have several different options. They're kind of hidden away, really small, but we can change the hue, the saturation, the luma values. And in this case, we are going to change the saturation. So I'm going to click on this button and with the picker tool, which is automatically selected right over here, if you do not see this, you can select it right underneath this tab right here, qualifier. And then I will select the blue part right over here, just swipe across it because that will decide the range. And as we can see, the blues in this render are quite high and that is correct. So we have a lot of blues in this render and there's some red as well, which we can see right over here. Now, if you want to change the saturation, all we have to do is drag this slider down. So if I were to drag it down entirely, it will become gray. Now that's not good. So I'm going to bring it down just a little bit, have it be subtle. So this is the difference. And maybe I like the popping blue better than this result even though it looks a bit more real. So I'm just going to turn this note off, but you do know a new trick. Go over to the next render, and this one is actually pretty much the same as this one. So I'm going to hold my mouse over this one, middle click, and then we got this render right over here. And of course, we also have the strawberry, which is transparent. I'm going to select it and make sure that it's the same color grade as this one. So now we've color graded all our images. Oh, there is our blue line and the red line. So if you can see, it will play out. That is the animation. So now we're going to make smooth transitions between all of these and make sure that it's just a bit more pleasant to look at. So in order to get this to work, we actually run into a problem right now. Because if you try to add in a video transition, let's say across the solve, and you try to drag it on here, nothing actually happens. Now the reason for it is that we are using PNGs and you can't apply video transitions to PNGs. So make sure that your color grade is exactly the way that you want it to be and then we're going to render it out as an MP4 and work from there. So press I, one frame backwards right over here, press O, and now we've got this entire timeline selected, which means that we can render it out as an MP4. Don't include the transparent strawberry, because if you render that out as an MP4, it will lose the transparency, it will just be a black background. So don't do that, leave this one out here. I'm going to render it, so go over to the rocket icon right over here. I'm going to click on browse, and I will select a folder for this, give it a name, 
Then I will go over here to the format and change it to MP4. And now we can press on add to render queue, render all, and it will render this out. So I've rendered the MP4 out, so I'm heading back into the edit tab right over here and I will go to the video folder where I placed this and I've dragged it in there right now. As you can see, it is the exact same size as everything that we've got right over here. And now before we actually remove this on the bottom, let's first make some cuts. So click on B for the blade tool so we can cut this up. Now you want to make sure that this is enabled. The hotkey for this is N and it will make sure that it snaps to a certain part in the clip. And in this case, it's going to be where the line is right here. So we're just going to simply cut it exactly where all the clips end and begin. And now we have all our clips separated. So I'm going to select all of this, bring it to the side, bring back this little black one because that is the transparent. Then I will bring all of this, hold shift and bring it down. And now everything is on the first line of video. So now we can start adding transitions and make sure that this entire edit is a bit more smooth. Right over here, I actually think the transition looks pretty good, but there's a little extra that we can add. Go over to video transitions, click on this button, and type glow. So now we have the fusion transition called glow. So let's place this right on here and it will make it brighter as it gets closer. So we are going to decrease the length of this because I don't want it to be this bright already over here, around here. It's going to be a really bright flash. Bam, like that. So right now, let's go over to this transition. It's quite harsh. So the way I'm going to do it, so I'm going to drag this upwards and I will bring this to the side and I will actually take this handle which allows us to fade it in. So it's basically like opacity already built into the clip. So I'm going to bring it right over there. Let's see. And that's just a little bit smoother as well. Whoop. Like this. Uh, I think we can do the exact same trick for this one. So drag this underneath, then take this side and drag it to the left. Just a little bit smoother. So right now we're over here and the strawberry is coming in, but it's kind of janky going over into the next shot. As you can see, bam, it just changes. And we want to get a smooth transition out of this. So the way I'm going to do it is I am going to type in bright, brightness flash right over here. I'm going to drag it on this clip and let's see what it does for us. And now the transition is a bit more smooth. We go over here to the strawberry and this part is a bit too slow. So I am going to drag this one over and maybe have it start all the way over here. Drag this out for some opacity. It's going over right into the cut. Pop. Now this is the drop that we're going to be transitioning in and it's going to transition to this shot right over here where the smoothie comes sliding in we get some fruits in the background and this is going to be the final shot. But we are going to do that in the next tutorial. So right now we have edited this together. I've shown you how to use some simple transitions and we also color graded all the shots. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how to add text effects to this entire product animation. I'm going to show you how to enter this droplet and I'm also going to show you how to use AI voices if you would like to use that and we're going to add some sound effects as well. So I'll see you in the next one. So we've now got the basis for our product animation, but we are not done yet. In the next video, you're going to learn some more advanced techniques like text animation, tracking, and finishing everything up to complete the free course. So if you want to become an undeniable force in the 3D space, then I highly recommend watching this video next.